A few years ago, I came across a painting by the artist Albert Edelfeld entitled The Virgin in the Rose Garden. The painting depicts Mary sitting in a rose garden, knitting a cloak. The landscape behind her, which she is superimposed upon, is blurred out, out of focus, and nondescript. Her hands work feverishly, knitting the cloak, as if her hands had a mind of their own. As she knits, she appears to be ensconced by a cocoon of roses walling out the outside world. The most notable aspect of the painting is Mary's gaze, which is far off in the distance, suggesting a contemplative state. I believe Mary is knitting the last cloak her son Jesus will ever wear, and she intuitively knows it will also serve as his burial shroud. If not for her haunting contemplative gaze, the painting would be relegated to a, a class of paintings that spoke, but not loudly enough to be heard, and could be easily passed over. Her gaze is, is not born out of a, a newness or of a, a fresh beginning as births typically begin, but from an end. She has reached the end of thought she has mentally exhausted all avenues of possible resolution to stave off the dark cloud looming on the horizon. If only the death of her son was inextricably linked to the completion of the shroud, then if the shroud was never completed, or if each and every stitch took a lifetime to complete, then the end would never come but Mary knows this is not possible. And being confronted with the rawness of death, she slips ever more deeply into the silence of contemplation because thought is now outmoded and no longer needed. When my brother died a number of years ago, my mother went out the night before his wake to purchase for him a suit for his burial. She was very deliberate in her selection of color and style, since she was familiar with what he looked best in years before. Being this would be the first and the last time my mother would see him in this suit, I think she took extra care in, in making sure it was, it was just so. However, the suit must have acquired wrinkles in transit from the day before. So my mother took to ironing so that the wrinkles were no more. As she took to ironing, I watched from the room right next door. If only the wrinkles were inextricably linked to the end, I bet she would have jostled the bag all the more. If she passed the iron over each wrinkle ever more slowly, it could take a lifetime to finish but she knew this could not be so. If she ironed out all the wrinkles and left but one, which someday she would get around to finish, but she knew this was not to be so, because her son was here no more. As her gaze lifted from the, the wrinkles to the, the kitchen wall, I imagine she came to the conclusion that her thoughts were of no use here anymore. I was sure I would never see that look my mother had that night before. But I realized it was the same look our mother Mary had 2,000 years before.